Good morning. Cool. Are you sure you're there? Should we try again? Good morning. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, it's good to see you all, particularly our visitors this morning. You're very welcome. Um, it's good to be found in God's house again this morning. It's a wonderful place to be. It's a wonderful time to be in God's presence, and I believe God's going to really speak to us again as we've gathered. So we're going to start with a song, and then we've got a, um, quite a few bits to go through this morning. Good morning. If you're able to stand with me, let's sing. Bless the Lord on my soul.
Should we take our seats a moment, please? We're going to watch a video together. It's not a happy video, in a sense. It's the BMS disaster appeal video, but it's very important. And we want us to share it together this morning. And after we've done so, we're going to have prayer for the nations, and then we'll do something out of the back of that. So can we just run it then, please, Mark? We all know how it works. Disasters happen. We don't know why. The poor suffer. You donate money. The West swoops in and fixes everything. Everyone lives happily ever after. It's a comforting thought, but it's not how it works. A disaster may be news for a month, but the recovery process can take decades. Rebuilding homes, roads, schools, hospitals, economies, the social fabric can take years. Psychological scars don't heal when TV crews leave, and outsiders don't always know best. That's why BMS works with local partners, sends money more often than people, or goods that threaten local economies, and gives more grants to long-term recovery than immediate relief. Why we pay for food and medicine, as well as trauma counseling and rehabilitation. We react to disasters, but we also prepare for them. Funding disaster readiness around the world and building resilience in high-risk areas. Raising money before disasters happen from people like you, so that when they do, we respond immediately. The important part is you. Without your giving, none of this happens. With your giving, it can. That's how it works. Give now to BMS Disaster Recovery. So you've seen the video, you know how it works. And for example, after the Haiti earthquake over 10 years ago, the BMS Relief Fund has given a lot of money to a local organisation to build houses out of the rubble of the old houses, which is pretty clever, isn't it? They are bulletproof, earthquake proof and burglar proof which is very clever indeed. But why do we give it? Of course there's Afghanistan, it's always in the news, still is, happy to say, but there is so much more, so much more. And over the last few years, they've, they've given, among other things, to Sri Lanka flood response and psychosocial support for children caught up in that. In Uganda, to supply nutrition for Sudanese refugees. In Nepal, for disaster preparedness and also flood recovery. In the Philippines, for typhoon relief. In the Lebanon, for refugee education. So, it goes on and on. Some of those grants that they give are a thousand pounds, some of them are 30, 40,000. So they're giving away a lot of money and it comes, as he said, from people like us. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, who sees all the world and weeps over much of it, we thank you for this fund and the vision that led to it and causes it to be distributed around the world to help those who are most in need. We thank you for the readiness of those who give and we thank you for those who administer the fund. And we thank you too very much for the, those at the coalface doing all this work sometimes in very, very difficult situations. We pray that these people will all know your guidance and wisdom. 
that they will continue to be able to show your compassion to those in need around the world. We want them to be able to see your love in the action that is done around them, that they will know why it is done, that if Jesus was here, if you were here, you would be doing these things and helping these people. And we pray that they will know that as they see the work around them. In your precious name, amen. try anything on for money, won't you? Yeah. <laughs> but it is our time to give. And we know the need that is there. And what Jackie has said, there's only been a few countries. There are many, many countries where we need to be giving. So what we thought we'd do, you've been sitting down long enough. So there's four baskets at the back. There's four members of the uh, mission team. Um, you know we can't put baskets around, but there's nothing to stop you going and putting something in the basket. Um, as long as you've come prepared to do that. If you haven't come prepared, then there is a note in, in the weekly news that tells you on there where you need to, to send the money, and it goes into Lynn, and then Lynn will get it off to BMS. But, uh, so if you haven't come prepared, don't worry. We'll still take your money off you. Um, but there's, there's more than one way, one way of doing it. So I'm gonna ask Graham if we can just do one more song, Graham. And whilst we do that, we'll all be able to have a little walk around. And if you go and put, the, put your offering into the basket, that would be absolutely brilliant. As I say, if you haven't come prepared to give, that's not a problem. We can still do it again. Thanks, Greg. If you're able to stand and sing, I raise a hand with you. Sing it. 
bless this offering as your people have given. Lord, we ask that you would use it for your honour, your glory, and to meet the needs that there are in this world. Lord, thank you for involving us in this plan and purpose. And Lord, we ask that you would bless everyone that gets involved in this. Be an honour of your glory. Amen. We're going to continue to worship, uh, but if you, if the children are wanting to go out, if there's any, uh, I've another quick look around properly, but if there is, uh, Maria and Colin are going to look after them. Uh, this morning because uh, Wayne and Sarah are unable to be with us. We're going to sing, Come let us worship our King, and He is a King. He's sitting on His throne, and He is King forever. Not just for a day, not just for a decade, or whatever it is, a platinum, which the Queen, I think, is going to um, share this year, but He is King forever. So let's worship Him.
Verse 2, we sang, you've been faithful for every storm. And throughout life, we've all been through storms. We go through good times, we go through bad times. You may be going through a good time now or a bad time. I don't know. The Lord knows. But we've got so many things to be thankful for. So many things to say that he is our king. So he is so great. So one another, if you've got something you want to share, a praise, a verse, whatever, just praise his name. He is worthy of all praise this morning. Because he is our great king. This next song, the first verse says, I searched the world but it couldn't fill me. People search for all different things in their life, don't they? Whatever it is, there's some sort of God-shaped hole in our life. And people try and find it. They try and all sorts of religions, all sorts of drugs, rock and roll, whatever it is. But they can never find it because it's God that can only fill that hole. So let's see. Yeah. 
people then came on and said look we cannot get you to hospital we've got no ambulances can you get in there by your own means luckily my uh, son well, I say luckily I think it was meant my son really stepped up he uh, got his car out and uh, me the wife were going to hospital what I didn't know is that the ambulance people had said to Jenny, if he stops breathing, please find the ambulance. I got to hospital and I walked through the doors. I walked through the doors with a big red cross on them saying, you cannot come in, this is a COVID ward. And I just walked, stumbled in there. And Jenny was behind me. And later on she told me she didn't know whether she'd see me again. First of all, I was in emergency. Now, normally you'd have a bay uh, all to yourself. There was actually two cots in each bay. I then got transferred to uh, a ward. It was a mixed ward because there was everybody there, and it was a COVID ward. And I s realized that, okay, I've got this COVID. 
And then a nice doctor came up to me and said, Martin, uh, by the end of the week, you'll most probably be intubated. And I thought, no. No, I'm not. No. I'm sure God's got something for me. So, uh, a couple of days later, I got transferred up to HDU, High Dependency Unit. And I had this big hat put on, and you have straps from the hat underneath your arms because they're putting in high pressure oxygen. I've got some photos on my phone if you want to see them. <coughs> I look like a minion. <laughs> I slowly stayed the same. I saw people die. I heard the doctors say, we can do nothing more for you. It was horrible. But then I got transferred down to an overflow ward. I still had my big hat with me. There were six of us in the ward. And it came Sunday. Gone in on Tuesday, and this was Sunday. Sunday, I spiralled out of control. I was so hot, you cannot believe. But I knew everybody was praying. I knew everybody was praying. I, f I felt like the old advert with the uh, ready break, like an orange glow over me. Prayer was palpable, it really was. Um, I couldn't breathe, even though I had all the oxygen. And all I know is this guy called Phil, a hospital worker, came in. He actually sort of took bits of pipe, put it through water, and got me on an oxygen mask again so I could have more wet oxygen. Oxygen, hot oxygen smells like oats, and I don't like the smell of oats anymore. Um, but he stayed over me, and every time I came conscious, all I could hear was him say, breathe. By morning, he disappeared. But I know my God was with me. Throughout that stay, I had my mobile phone. I was getting messages via email. My phone, well, the phone wouldn't ordinarily work. I think the, the walls of the hospital were too thick or something, but everybody's got mobiles now. You can still use them. And we sang that beautiful song this morning, and 10,000 Reasons. And if I may, And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise, unending, 10,000 years, then forevermore. Now I have another bit of my story and I can share that with you afterwards if you want, but I thank God for prayer and I thank God for him because he got me through the COVID. Amen. 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 There is much more. But what a wonderful God we have. What a tremendous God we have. I found this a couple of days ago. And it just made me think because I knew what uh, Martin was bringing. Lord, I am so thankful that there's no co coincidences in my life, but only God instances. You are at work. Uh, open my eyes to see that you are at work. You are at work. Don't let me miss your fingerprints on the pages 
of my day. And those, those words, to see the fingerprints on the pages of my day, he's with us. Yeah. Martin's tr testimony is tremendous. But we all have a testimony this morning that God has kept us yeah. and will continue to keep us. Let's stop, because otherwise I'll be taking this young man's time. Yeah. Peter's going to come and share God's word with us. Thanks, Peter. fantastic testimony that was amazing you know just thank god for that you know and it's it's so amazing that what we go through in life and as christians sometimes we can feel so you know powerless you know we see our friends struggling and we see situations happen but the scripture says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony yeah. and you know it's so important that we understand that is yes we are secure in christ but it's what comes out of your mouth? Jesus said, you call me Lord, and therefore I am. Yeah. You know, if you, want the, if you want the Lord to work in your life, declare it. You know, it's, it's not over until the, whatever, the, the big chap. <laughs> if you just sing, sing over your life, declare the goodness of God. Let your testimony be, and your testimony needs to be shared. And you, if you've seen anything of me on the, on the videos, uh, that are on the church website, then you'll know a lot about me. I'm learning who you are, right? I, you know, I haven't seen the other side of the camera, so it's great to get to know you, and I really hope we can get to know you. This is my lovely wife, Denise, and my sister's turned up to see me this morning. My mother-in-law's here. Fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, normally, my greatest supporter was my mother, and she died in the first lockdown, sadly, so I'll be looking for a few amens around the place. Amen. She used to be my amener in the church. Um, but uh, I just, you know, I want to encourage you to that. I, I, I think it, the reason I'm uh, invited to share is because I am a, I, I'm a, I can't help myself but be an evangelist. I can't help myself but just overflow. I love telling people about Jesus. I love telling people about the goodness of God. There's so much that we go through in this life that, you know, causes us to struggle, causes us to slip. Uh, but, you know, God has given us this great testimony and you don't as Philip said the other week you don't have to have a testimony like mine if you don't know I was one of those classics that you read in little booklets you know I was into the, the, the drink and fighting and in and out of prison and all that kind of stuff and then Jesus set me free uh, thank God you know I, I if you haven't seen the video it was it I, I was in church one little uh, chaplain's hour I won't go into it but that verse third verse in, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? The third verse said, Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. And one day maybe I'll share my testimony here and yeah, I'll, give you, I'll unpack that a bit more. But he sets the prisoners free. He sets us free and you know we don't have to be locked up in a prison to be set free there's so many of us we get locked up in ourselves you know this is a an era of you know poor mental health it seems everything that you see nowadays seems to be about the you know the the, the, the sadness of people's lives and their poor mental health you know and, and the bp's only got to say we're a bit short in one or two stations and the whole world gets locked down because everybody goes into panic we're terrified. And so what we need in this terrified generation is some security. Yeah. And I love the fact that, you know, uh, Paul and Philip have been doing a, uh, this series on Ephesians. Because I think Ephesians is one of those books in the scriptures that just is a, it's a bedrock. It's something you can stand on every morning. Remind yourself of the wonder of who we are in Christ, of who God is and who and how our lives can be set on a solid rock 
because you know life gets a bit slippy i don't know if it does for you it does for me you know sometimes you, you're gonna have you ever walked down towards the sea and as on your way down there you, you step on a bit of green and um, yeah um, what do you call it seaweed, seaweed yeah seaweed as the as the sea's gone out and suddenly you oh you know and that life gets that way life can get that way and you know we need to know that there is something some way someone and if you're not a Christian here this morning, if you've never really got to know Jesus, I want you to take note this morning. Just open your ears and let God speak to you. Let him speak to you. And as you hear that message, let faith grow in your heart. And at the end, I'm going to pray and ask God to, to meet with us and to, to really fill us with the Holy Spirit. So, you know, just allow God as I'm speaking. Uh, you know, I, I love sharing the Word of God. You know why? Because I don't have to be confident in myself. As you can see, I don't have a lot to be confident about. So, you know, I love the fact that I've got this beautiful gospel, this wonderful truth that will set you free. And you know, um, I think Philip said it the other week, you know, it doesn't have to be this massive transformation, it just needs to be an open heart. And God plants a seed. You know what? God saw the world that the Bible says we, we hated him at that time. We didn't believe we were his enemies, but he sent his one and only son into the world. He sent a seed into, the, into a, a young girl's womb to change the world. You think, well, that's not very big. <laughs> Surely it would have been better to turn up with a whole army of the Lord's host, you know, and, and come and take over the place. Surely that would have been better. But that little seed came the little baby who became the son of God, who became the greatest man that ever walked this world, that became the greatest story that could ever be told, that became a movement of people, that became a church all over the world, that has changed the world, that set up societies, as you've seen, just as the Baptist mission are trying to do still in many countries around the world. We are here to change the world. I'm getting right off, and this lady over here is going to try and follow my notes. Good, good luck with that. Yes, uh, sorry about that. I'll, I'll get back to it now, yes. But um, it's slide number one. Here we go. Who do you think you are? So it's so important that you think right. You think right. You know, I, I remember an old preacher once saying, you've got to get rid of stinking thinking. We've got to think right. We have to see life the way that it truly is. You know, if you go for counselling nowadays, thank God, they offer a thing called CBT, uh, which is, you know, cognitive behavioural therapy. It's, it's thinking about things rightly. It's not allowing your fears and your paranoias to lead your heart, which leads you to panic, which leads you to depression, anxiety, and all of these mental health issues. But CBT is great. But CBT in the church is constant biblical thinking. We need to constantly apply the word of God to our thinking. Get rid of stinking thinking. Get rid of, you know, we've been brought up in a world that is full of so much stuff that has polluted our thinking. So much stuff that has just made a mess of all of the beautiful order that God set in place. And we need to get rid of that and apply the word of God to our thinking. One of the greatest men that I've ever had the privilege to meet. And by the way, I love that. What a privilege it is. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Paul, and whoever else was involved in taking the risk and letting me up here. And um, the fact that I am here preaching in Campbell McAlpine's church. Sorry, I'm sorry to call it that, but Campbell was one of those great old souls who came to our Bible college and he spoke and he was fantastic. He's, you know, some of his sermons were just foundational to everything that was the rest of my ministry. So thank God for him. And Bob Gordon, if you've ever heard of him, my father in the Lord, he just was an incredible man. But also Colin Urquhart. Sadly, I don't know if you've heard that he died this week, uh, last week, and uh, he was a great man. But uh, just on this whole uh, series of who do you think you are, Colin Urquhart wrote, your performance will not enhance your position in Christ. You've got to give up on that. Stop trying to make yourself better in God's sight. That's religion. That's all religion. Stop that. Your faith, your relationship with God is set, it's solid, it's complete, 
It's, there's nothing else you can add to it. Somebody once said, there's nothing you can do to make him love you more, and there's nothing you can do to make him love you less. That's what's so amazing about grace. But Colin said, your performance will not enhance your position in Christ, but, you, but knowing your position in Christ will enhance your performance. If, you, if we know who we are in Christ, it changes stuff. It changes who we are. It changes how we view life. It changes whether I've got the confidence to, to, to do this thing, whether I can overcome this situation. Will I get through? Will I get through the valley of the shadow of darkness? Yes, I will, because you are with me. Amen. And you never leave me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. So thank God we have this this knowledge of him. Knowledge is so important. Not, not you know, if, you were, if you're not schooled, if you're not, you know, if you struggled at school, I've been working with some chaps this week that, you know, it seems that like laborers, there's a lot of them that have struggled at school and, you know, they, they've had a, 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 I don't know, dyslexia or whatever, and have really struggled. But, you know, the beauty of this gospel is so simple. If, if a six-year-old can't get a hold of the fact that God loves them and God has given everything that they need to grow into a beautiful person, to be filled with love, to be filled with life. If we can't boil it down to that simplicity, we need to change our approach. You know, God is so beautiful, he's so wonderful. We've sung it in the worship, thank you, Graham, that you know, already love overcomes. Love over, what was it? I oh, was well, singing it, it was lovely. Um, okay. Yeah, it's just love overcomes in one of the songs that we say. Beautiful. And it does. God is love. God is love. And if we can just begin to get a grasp on who he is, then God will set us free. So with this Ephesians message, read through Ephesians. Eat it up. Get, out, get a hold of it. Let it really fill you. Because that security in this insecure world a poor mental health would just change everything. Get rid of wrong thinking and really get a hold of what God has for you. Give them a ring every morning. You know God's phone number, don't you? Some of you old saints will remember this. Who's God's phone number? Jeremiah 333. That's God's phone number. What's it say? Call on me and I will answer you and show you show you marvelous things that you know nothing about. Just call to me. So in the mornings, take time to, to let this be a bedrock to you. Let Ephesians be a bedrock to you. Because those wonderful things that God wants to show you is not just, oh, aren't Saturn's rings lovely? And I thought, oh, the Northern Lights, see what I've done over here, it's wonderful. It is great. And as we've seen this morning and sung this morning, God is the creator of all things, the great God, the awesome God. But do you know what he says to me and you? Do you know what shakes my world? Not the army of the Lord of hosts, not yet anyway. But what shakes my world is when he says, I love you. I think you are wonderful. I think you're amazing. I, you're my treasure. You're where I've placed all of my treasure. You're the place where I've just invested so much. I've given everything for you. Let that sink into your heart. Let that sink into your mind every single day so that when slippiness comes into your life, God can bring you back to the absolute solid rock that is Jesus Christ, the foundation stone to the whole thing. Every morning put that building block in place. Anyway, let's read. Let's read from Ephesians 3 uh, and, uh, and the scripture that I'm speaking on this morning. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me. For you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation. As I've already written briefly in, uh, in reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which was made known to men in other generations as it is now. It's been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles 
are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, hallelujah, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through him, through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. And praise God, whoever's speaking next week will talk to you about that glory, and I'm looking forward to it. Who's speaking next week? Good question, okay, right. <laughs> Whoever it is, we're going to talk about the, you know, how high and wide and deep and long is the love of God and that we'll be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that measure is, but I want it. I'm desperate for it. And every single day, let us all join in this journey of becoming bigger and wider, not that way, in heart, bigger and wider and longer and deeper so we can embrace people. I'll tell you, Martin, that's a great testimony, but the greatest testimony I'm absolutely sure is the empathy you now have in your heart to share with those that are close to death, with those that are full of fear, with those who just can't cope with the way that life is overtaking them. So God has made you a bigger man because of difficult circumstances, and we praise God that you're still here. We praise God to see what God's going to do through and in you in the days to come, praise God. So, verse 3, verse three, sorry, chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, it's now been revealed by the Spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. So do you ever contemplate when it says apostles and prophets? A lot of people say, oh, it's the prophets of the new day, but it isn't. God has always been speaking through his prophets to his people. And uh, his people have let him down many, many times. And now the apostles have, have taken up that message and have spoken that prophetic word to our generation, to our, to our 2,000 years of church history. But it's now been revealed through the apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and share us together in the promise in Christ Jesus. He's made the two one. He's brought us together. We are, you know, we're not just some kind of wild oat that's been sown by the gospel. Because you know, it can feel like that, can't it? Especially evangelists. I went all over the place preaching the gospel, just preaching it everywhere, trying to throw the word of God out like seed. And But the thing is, it isn't just chucking the word of God out like seed because when you receive that seed that seed is the DNA of Abraham it's the DNA of God you have been brought in to this glorious family of God that has been spoken through generation after generation after generation this incorruptible DNA seed of Abraham given to us in Christ, that gives us access, as Paul said last week, gives us access to the very throne room of God. Paul's in prison because he's been climbing over walls, as we heard last week. But God has invited us in from the court, if you've seen my videos, from the courtroom into the front room. We're not in the courtroom anymore. If you come in this morning, you feel the slightest bit of judgment in any way, just let that fall off you. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The, the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. So do not allow any condemnation. Don't you feel any guilt in this place? 
You feel free in Jesus because your Father, He loves you. He loves you. And because you've been brought from the courtroom, judgment is done in Christ. Hallelujah. It's done. It's finished. Amen. Keep going, bro. Love it. <laughs> judgment is done. We are now free. Free indeed, Paul said last week. Free indeed. Free from all of that judgment. So be at ease. We've been given a triple A pass if you're a youngster. You probably don't know what that is if you're not. A triple A pass, you get a backstage pass in Christ Jesus. You don't just get to go to the access all areas, you get to chill out with God himself. It's amazing, that's what's happened in Jesus. It's no longer, to, you know, we, we worship God from afar. We worship the great God, the awesome God, the God of the mountain, the God who is up there in the clouds. No, we have been invited through Abraham's seed, through that seed that has been placed in your heart that's called faith, that stirred that faith. It's by grace you've been saved, through faith. And even that's not of yourself, it's the gift of God. God has given you a gift of faith. Just a little gift. If it was, it was a tiny little seed, just like the one he planted in Mary that's changed the whole world. He plants a seed in your heart to set you free. I tell you what, you plant, that's, and, and somebody once said this, you can, you, you know, you can probably have a guess at how many seeds there are in an apple. But you will never know how many apples there are. In a seed. There are so many apples in the seed. One seed can become billions if you just give it a chance. Let your heart receive the seed of God this morning. Let this, this book bring some life to you. Let this message, let the word of testimony, let the, the sermon, let the, the singing, let everything this morning just fill you with the goodness of God. And let the seed of God transform your life. And let it bring you into the promises of Israel. That's the glory. I'm taking a risk here because I don't really know where this church stands on Israel and its place in, in God's picture. Personally, I believe that God has not finished with Israel. But if you read the end of Romans, it's quite clear that they've stumbled. They, you know, they're, they're like a footballer running down the wing and they've stumbled. They're out of the game. But they're still part of the picture. They're going to, you know, get up and actually, according to the book, according to the bit, the, 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 have you read the end? Yeah, it's yeah. really good. <laughs> according to the end, I, I always do that with a book. It's terrible. I just, hold on a minute, what happens? Are they still alive? <laughs> but, you know, according to the end, they, they recover. And then, then this is this great outpouring through them. Now, I just love, you know, for me, if you're not, if you, if you're, Considering Christ, if you're considering this faith, you know, what are the greatest proofs and evidences to me about God, his existence, and his effect in the world is Israel. Is this tiny little nation. Again, a tiny little seed. Just I think they, they make up 0.01% of the earth. And if you check out all the genius that's ever happened, all the great breakthroughs scientifically, medically, so many ways you will find it's like 98% Jewish. God promised Abraham, I will bless the world through you. And he's done it. He has done it. He has, I mean, they, it's just been amazing. However, on the flip side of that, and I was reading this in, uh, in Job in my reading this morning. Yeah, there was wanderings in the desert. There was, they, you know, they kept worshipping bulls and all sorts. Because, you know, even though it took a very short period of time to get Israel out of Egypt, it took quite a long time to get Egypt out of Israel. It took a long time for them to get over stinking thinking. We need to do that every single day. Let's, let's work on stinking thinking. Let's get rid of it. Leave it in the desert. It's where it belongs. Let's move into what God has for us. But God has done such amazing things through them, but he's grafted us into Israel. We're a grafted in branch, not a wild oat. We are part of God's eternal purpose. And that's wonderful. Philip breaks from Ephesians 2, 18 to 20. For through him we both have access 
to the Father by the one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members, here it is, of his household. Amen. We get access to the front room. We get to sit on our dad's lap and he can say, don't worry about it, I'm with you. I'm here. You remember that? When they were praying for you? The consolation of the knowledge of God, your father, saying, I'm with you. I'm with you in this. The wonder of being part of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. What an incredible mystery that is, that God has made the two one. What an incredible manifestation we are as the people of God now spread throughout the entire earth to declare his glory. Hallelujah. And uh, by verse 7, the gift of God's grace given through the working of his power. It's a gift this morning. As I've said this morning, don't come in with guilt, don't come in with condemnation over you, but also don't come in thinking, I just am not good enough. I can't be, I can't be this person. I can't be a super saint. I can't, you know, I've got stuff in me. I just can't get over. I've got addictions, I've got problems, I've got situations, I'm struggling. Do you know a gift is not given as wages? You know, wages are earned. This is a gift. This is God's gift to you. That's the grace of God. You know, you know that yeah, you've heard this a million times, the difference between grace and mercy. Mercy is not getting all that we deserve. Grace is getting everything that we don't deserve. God has given us so much in Christ Jesus. It's a gift. It's not wages. Not the, it's not given to the holiest and the cleanest. That's where religion goes so badly wrong. When it starts to say you've got to do X, Y and Z in order to get in to this. It isn't. It's the gift of God. Grace. Hallelujah. And we need to, you know, allow God to fill us with that. You know, that I, I was speaking with Paul a few weeks ago. And, you know, somebody once said to me that you know, the, the river of God is, is like fluid. It's a water that flows as refreshing throughout the world. But do you know where it flows? Does it, is it, does it only seek out the holy places and the clean places? Do you know whether it, and I love this, somebody once said it, the river flows in the path of least resistance. That's where water flows. Just in the path of least resistance. And that's where God comes to you this morning, not because you are particularly holy or good at it. And I'm, I'm quite good at being a Christian, eh? I've, I've been 35 years at it. I'm, I'm not bad at it, now, am I? Sister, I'll tell you. I'm all right. I can do the Christian thing. I can raise me hands. I can clap me hands. I can dance around. I can do all the christian -y stuff. That does not make, it certainly doesn't impress God in any sense. He loves it. He loves that we're together and we can spend time together, but it doesn't impress God. Nothing you can do can make him love you more. However, nothing you can do can make him love you less. Hallelujah. And he transform us, transforms us from inside out. As I said, not, uh, it, it, you know, we're not, not massive transformations all the time. Praise God, mine was, I came out, I went from being a real raging, angry young man and then talk to my sister, she'll tell you I've, I've, I seem to remember beating up a couple of her boyfriends at the time but you know, the, the thing was <laughs> you know, life was horrific and I met Jesus and he set me free and you know, I was, I, was the, I was the tobacco baron in the prison, if you know anything about prisons and I went out on the balcony I threw everything out, he said here, yeah, I'm done I went to the prison officer and said I'm not hitting any more, anybody for you anymore I'm, I've met Jesus, and they immediately sacked me and stuck me in a bag shop, so in tags on, on mail bags. I went from the top of the prison to the bottom of the prison immediately, but I was set free. I was already free, hallelujah. And I came out, I had this incredible revelation, went off to Bible college, and went as a missionary. 
Now, I'm not expecting that everybody that hears the word of the Lord this morning to go and become a missionary. If that's God's call on your life, God bless you. It needs more and more and more of people who are dedicated to give their lives to go out and save the world. Hallelujah. But, you know, when God comes into your life, he changes. I think it was Philip again said it the other week. It's just the, simple, the, the, the still small voice that speaks life into your heart, that, that brings faith, that transforms us bit by bit, just inside out. You know, we're not, I mean, if, if we're going to be changed into somebody that, you know, our superheroes, I'd be Daley Thompson. When I was a kid, I just wanted to be Daley Thompson. There was two issues with that. I was fat, and he was fit, and, and he's black, and I'm white. You know, so it, it was never going to happen. It was never going to happen. But, you know, there's, there's a desire in all of us to be something, to be better than we are. But God comes and he just transforms little by little. You know, thank God he doesn't do this massive thing all the time. I had a friend who's died, sadly, recently, David Aylin. He used to be uh, a great friend of mine when I was, when I was in the early chair. Uh, well, I first began going to church, but I was amazed that he was a Christian. I was amazed that he could become a Christian because he was so nice. He said, you know, I used to tell him what I'd been doing and everything because when you're newly a Christian, it's like, oh, well, I used to do this, I used to do this. I'm over there. But, you know, he, he'd say, well, I've, I've, never, I've never smoked, I've never, I've never drunk, I've, I've, never, I've never had sex with a girl, I've never... I haven't done any of that. And I said, well, how did you become a Christian? <laughs> what on earth convinced you to become a Christian? He said, I just was, you know, one morning, I just felt this sense of just not being good enough for God, just not being good enough. And he, he gave me a revelation of my sin. That's a much bigger revelation than mine. You know, people go on about people like me. Oh, this guy was in prison, He's, you know, it was amazing. But, you know, the revelation to, a, to, to a, a, a beautiful young man of the sinfulness of his soul and his need for God is the greatest revelation. Massive revelation. But, you know, my beautiful wife here, you know, she's, she's just lovely. She was like this before I met her. And, you know, the, the, and before she met Jesus as well. She was beautiful. It's amazing. A lovely person. And yet God has come, has wooed her, and she has felt, as somebody once said, her heart strangely warmed, and has felt drawn by the love of God. So allow God to do that transformation in your heart, and it is by hearing. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the word of God. Amen? So just allow God to speak to you day by day. Remember, Jeremiah 333 3, 3 is his phone number if you want to give him a bell. We who with unveiled face are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We who with unveiled face all reflect the Lord's glory, it says. All reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. I saw any records stuck. It comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Not just our constant efforts. The Bible says our efforts are like filthy rags. You know, don't spend your life trying to build a, you know, a something. You know, especially in, in regard, you know, the, the, the Bible says that, that heaven is paved with gold. So don't build gold all your life to turn up and say, here, I've brought some pavement. I mean, what's the point of that? Store up your treasures in heaven. How do you store up treasures in heaven? You forgive. You love. You bless. You encourage. You take that little seed of faith that God has given you and you just spread it around as you go. Wherever, who, whomever you meet, love overcomes. Love pervades. Love just gets into you. Go around giving people an itch they can't scratch. Why on earth was that person so kind to me? <laughs> Give them an itch they can't scratch. But it comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. 
And now through the church, this manifold wisdom of God should be made known. We are his demonstration. We are his demonstration. We just heard it. I love that I got it, that you were a testimony before I spoke. You are his demonstration. You're his demonstration of the Lord's glory. Not because God saved him from COVID. You know, we always do that. You know, they, I, I always wondered about that. Why is it that Israel and its wanderings, when, you know, when God wants them to go into the land, why doesn't he make it in a drought period when they can have a little stroll through the Jordan? How come it's got to be that the Jordan was in flood, the Bible says? How come it's always that this massive thing to overcome? And why doesn't God just make it, you know, I'm a Pentecostal, we're big on breaking down things in prayer meetings and smashing walls and all that kind of stuff. If you haven't been in one, it's hilarious and it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful, but you know, God doesn't always do that. In fact, I find with my life, more often than not, he makes it worse. I remember sitting one day, I've got a ministry issue going awry in, in Derbyshire and I sat on the wall and said, Lord, I can't believe it. I can't believe this is happening. And he said in a beautiful voice, you haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord. <laughs> God sometimes makes it worse. But what does the Bible say? With my God, I can scale a wall. With my God, I can advance against the troop. I can get through this COVID. I can get through this situation. I can get through the fact that I've lost my job. I can get through the fact that my wife has left me. I can get through all of these things, everything that we face. I can because Jesus is with me, because he is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. So through the church, the manifold wisdom of God has been made known. We are his demonstration. We're diverse. Have a look around. We're a bit of a weird bunch. We are. We're, we're from all sorts of works and walks of life. Thank God. Because all works of life, all areas of life need to be touched with the gospel. You can't reach who I know and I can't reach who you know. <clears throat> we need to be who we are, where we are, and allow God to demonstrate his glory through us. Imperfect people filled with the light of Christ that shines through the cracks. That's what the Bible says. We're, we're, we're mega pottery. We're on the potter's wheel and we're cracked pots. We are, we, you know, the light shines through us. My old friend Roy Nightingale used to say that all the time. You're just a cracked pot. You're a cracked pot. That's all right. It's okay because inside the light shines out. Inside the light shines through. <coughs> Praise God. Uh, I'm, I'm finishing with this. But the earth needs this message. The earth needs this love. And the church, I believe, exists so that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Wherever I've been, whatever church, whatever ministry I've been in, that's been the message that lives in my heart. I can't get away from it. We exist that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's why they call me an evangelist, I guess, because I believe that we are here for a dying world. The only membership that exists for the non-membership. We are here so that the world can see, so the world can watch this demonstration of how somebody can come through such hard times. Your hard times. People are watching, you know. People are watching. And it's not, don't get in a panic over they watched you when somebody cut you up and you allowed a, a, something to come out of your mouth that shouldn't have come out of your mouth. Or, or you pushed your trolley in front of somebody to get in, you know, get in the queue. Or, you know, don't, think, oh no, no. And we're always condemning ourselves. Just take a moment. You know, and if you did push in front of that person, how about you look over your shoulder, there's only 20 quid they're buying. Say, I'll buy that as well for you if you want. You know, or whatever, just do what you can where you are, however you can, but let love be manifest through your life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish in a minute, honestly, but uh, let, let light shine in the darkness. Go into all the world. 
Let's live lives of significance, not just of success. Lives of significance, lives that matter. When, when people meet you, let them be blessed. Let them be blessed through your overflow, the overflow of all that God is doing in you. Love more, forgive more, encourage more, bless more. I'm going to ask the, uh, the band to come and uh, I don't know what we're singing at the end here, but I just want to give you a chance and opportunity. If you're not, if you, maybe if you haven't met this Jesus, maybe if you haven't fully understood the call of God, that he just wants to love you. you know, he just wants to give you life. He just wants you to open your heart and all of the baggage that you come with. He just wants to give you love and life that will set you free. And it will set your feet on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. It will deliver you in the slippery times, the difficult times, and give you a firm place to stand. And whilst the musicians play, why don't you just take a moment to say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry, I've, I've, gone, I've just gone my own way. Why don't we do that right now? Just close your eyes, do business with God yourself. Lord, I'm sorry, I've, I've gone my own way, I've done it my way. And what I've heard this morning, I just want to know this love. I want to know this peace. So will you come to me, Holy Spirit? Will you come to me and fill me with your goodness? Fill this frail vessel with your love that I may be part of changing this world. And if you're out of sorts, then you need to get your feet back on solid ground, the foundation stone that is Jesus. Take a moment before you stand and sing and just let your feet be on solid ground. Take a moment to see where your feet are standing and let it be on Jesus Christ. In Him and through faith in Him, we may approach with freedom and confidence, that scripture says. And I can only end with now to Him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before His glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. Let's stand if you're able to sing the Lord is my shepherd.
So we thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can trust in you and only in you. You alone are the one that we can place our trust in. Lord, we thank you for the way that you've spoken to us this morning. Lord, cause it to, to rest in our hearts. Cause it to cause us to come to that place of taking all that you have for us and, and taking it and associating it with ourselves. And Lord, we just give you all the glory. Lord, speak to us. Speak as only you can in that still, small voice. Yet it's so small and tiny as it were. Yet it's so vast in what it does. And Lord, we just ask that you be with us. So as we go to our separate homes, Lord, rest in the body with us, we pray. For your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. 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 Shall we thank Peter for the word that he's brought this morning? Yeah. And if you want to share, if you want to speak to Peter, then he's here and he'll speak with you. And let's remember that God has spoken. Yeah. And when God speaks, something happens. Yeah. So be prepared for what God is going to do yeah. amongst us. Amen. Amen.